Well, the president says he's now focused on a smooth transfer of power, which, again, is an abrupt turn from what he had said just 24 or 48 hours earlier. So I wonder, how should we read his unwillingness to attend the inauguration? Is he really committed to cooperating with a transition? So at this point, once again, we're, we're in the last couple of days. There's only really so much that a Trump administration can do at this point. Um, you know, Trump has come out. I mean, the statement he made in the video was was pretty clear. There's also a number of moving parts here. You know, it's not just Trump. There are other lawmakers and other aides to the president that are trying to make sure that nothing like what we saw on Wednesday with the Capitol happens again at this point. Uh, one interesting detail from today, Speaker Pelosi said that she talked with the Joint Chiefs of Staff to discuss any available precautions for from preventing a president from initiating military hostilities or launching a nuclear strike. There's definitely a lot of awareness among top leaders in Washington to make sure that the last uh, 12 days of the Trump administration are, are relatively peaceful. OK. Well, 12 days is still a lot of time, and we know President Trump has been making a lot of use of his pardoning power. And he may now extend that privilege to his family as well as himself. What can you tell us about who's on his list and how he goes about doing that? So Trump is apparently on his own list of people to pardon, as well as his family members, um, Ivanka Trump, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Top advisors are on the list, like Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and his senior advisor, Stephen Miller. The list also includes uh, several celebrities, including rappers Little Wayne and Kodak Black. And so most of these pardons are preemptive. Uh, many of these individuals have not been accused of a crime at this point. Uh, and so but Trump's list is currently being vetted by lawyers who are concerned that the pardons might create some new allegations of obstruction of justice. And the other entire thing to keep in mind here is that when the president gives a pardon, it's only for federal crime. Mm. There has been some suggestion and speculation that perhaps related for things related to his tax returns, for things related to his campaign, that there might be criminal charges pressed by various states against the president or members of his family. Right. Pardons for his family, himself, and celebrities seems very on brand. Um, when you talk to folks in Congress, to your sources among Republicans and Democrats, what do they think the president's relationship will be to the Republican Party going forward after all of this? That's a really fantastic question. I, I think it's something that a lot of people were trying to figure out before Wednesday, and then Wednesday happened and just made everything just so much more stark because you really have begun to see Republicans who have been by Trump's side for these last four years come out, criticize him vocally. You've seen uh, individuals leave his cabinet, Betsy DeVos, Elaine Chao. Uh, now we're hearing calls This just broke uh, before I got on the, uh, on the phone with you. Lisa Murkowski, a Republican senator from Alaska, is saying that Trump needs to leave the party. She's saying that she's concerned about the future of the Republican Party. And I think one of the interesting things that I can we should point out here is that I think it's fair to look at the Republican Party in terms of Trump and his supporters and then uh, other sort of more mainstream Republicans. Mm. I mean, going back to the inauguration just for a second, George W. Bush is planning to attend the inauguration. Uh, former Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan is planning to attend the inauguration. And so it's not just that the entire Republican Party is following Trump here. You're definitely seeing a divide um, both in lawmakers and in other figures in the party. Yeah, there's old school Republican Party and then there's the new wave um, that Trump kind of represents. Emily, thank you so much for joining us. Emily Wilkins, fantastic reporting all this week from Atlanta back to Washington. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.